So, why did I get fat? I mean, that's quite an alarming question, but I'm gonna tell you all about my journey to being morbidly obese, becoming obese, and I'm gonna take you right through when I was younger to where I am now, and yeah, hopefully you guys can relate in some way, but yeah. Let's get into it. So first of all, as a toddler, I was actually quite slim. Actually, I wouldn't call myself slim, but I was very normal. I wasn't like fat. Um, I think when I was a little baby, I was kind of like chubby, like a bit chubby, but really cute, but like not like obese or like, you know, huge or anything. And this was around maybe like five years old, six years old. I was relatively like a decent size, a good size um, for my age. But as I grew older, when I think I believe I was 10, I started to become a lot bigger. I would say I was obese. I do come from an African house old we do love love to eat a lot especially back then i think people didn't know a lot about health and a lot of our diet was a lot of like high carbs very sugary refined food type of um diet so and i was just one of those people i just really loved eating like i think like i was known by my aunties and uncles as you know the kid that would love to eat like they'll always like reward me in food i'll just always be constantly eating when i was younger i remember i was just like i just loved 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 food i don't really have have like a reason like some sort of like emotional trauma that happened to why I started eating I actually for as long as I can remember I just I just loved food I think sugar is like is it eight four times more um, addictive than cocaine so I think it's just a, a matter of me having refined sugar and becoming addicted and eating a lot of it you know crying if my parents didn't give me what I wanted and yeah I just basically love to eat. I actually remember looking at you know some pictures of when I was younger when I was younger when I was like 10 years old going to America and I was so huge like ah, uh, I can't even believe I can't even believe it I can't believe that at that age I was that big. It literally is astonishing how big I was. And, you know, my parents, you know, would just see it as like, oh, you know, fluffy way, you know, she's gonna like lose it as she grows older. But, honey, mm -mm. I was just big, basically. So when I got into secondary school, it literally just went up from there. I just gained even more weight. I was just very big compared to people who were my age. I was just always that big kid and of course I would be like called names because of it I wouldn't really say that I was bullied per se only because I was still quite well known in my first secondary school it's only when I went to my second secondary school where it was actually a lot more intense because I live in a predominantly white neighborhood so a lot of people were like you know they weren't used to seeing black people at all really racist really you know mean i never really internalized it as in bullying because i always could stand on my own ground i was like you can never but basically it was a factor of where people will talk about my weight a lot even in the nigerian community um because i'm nigerian you always have the aunties who just come and be like ah you're getting a bit of weight you know it's always a talking point your weight literally everywhere you go and in nigeria they're very blunt in how they speak they'll literally be like oh fat girl <laughs> like they literally will call you fat girl, as in just casual. And you're just like... I became more hyper aware of my weight in secondary school. And then that then progressed to when I went to college. Super, super, you know, aware of how much weight I was. Like the fact that I was just like very huge in comparison to my counterparts. And that's when I decided that, okay, I'm actually going to lose weight because I don't want to be their fat girl anymore. So as you do, you go and search on the internet and then you see all these different like fad diets where you can lose weight really quickly. And then that began the whole dieting phase of where I try on different fad diets to lose weight. And of course I did lose weight in different like, um, I guess, specs, different like, what's the word, bursts. Yeah, different bursts of like weight loss, like here and there. I feel like around then I would have been 22, 23 stone. I would have passed the 300 pound threshold when I was in secondary school slash college definitely because I remember being a size 24 in my trousers like in between 24 so actually being 23 in between size 22 and 24 which I am now so I definitely was over 300 pounds when I was in secondary school slash college but yeah so I started with my bad diet in heavily in college and I remember actually watching videos uh, where people be like don't fat diet you know it's better you lose slow steady you know because that messes all these things up and whatnot and I always just seen those videos and thinking goodbye I do not have two years to lose weight honey I need to lose weight 
tempo. Obviously now you can appreciate why it would have been a lot better for me to do that because then I probably won't be in the position I am in today. But yeah, so I did a lot of fad dieting, got down to like a, a decent size. I think I was actually looked good, but once you get into that mind frame of where you want to be like slimmer, it all becomes like a mental thing. You're never slim enough. When I look back at some photos in college, I actually wasn't that big, but in my mind, I remember feeling a lot bigger. When I went to uni, I was a decent size but still thought that I needed to lose more weight. Throughout uni, I got heavily snatched, honey. I was the slimmest I've ever been in my life in uni. At one point, I literally was just eating chicken, breast and spinach every single day. No carbs. I think I went with no carbs for like quite a while. The thing is though, in uni, I had got to that threshold in my mind where something clicked and I was actually fine with not eating any carbs. I, I wouldn't even desire to eat carbs because I was just so focused on just eating food just for fuel. So yeah, and I remember I actually had a quite a good enough relationship with food. I would always eat healthy, but I think then something happened. I think I had a, maybe like a cheat day and all fell apart. I then became like really obsessed with like muffins, donuts, croissants. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that I'm a pastry type of person. That is my kryptonite, honey. Cakes, donuts, you name it. That's a bit of me. So obviously that, you know, is something that I became like heavily addicted to, kept on going went through a struggle of like losing so much weight then binge eating so that's when I really severely developed binge eating it was a constant way of life for me to binge eat I literally would be good five days a week binge eat the next two days repeat 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 I just developed such a terrible relationship with food. That then went on to when I finished university, I just was so tired of going, my weight just kept going up and down, up and down, like it was all over the place. I then decided in 2016 that I am going to go on a Cambridge course. In uni, I went to my smallest, I got into my smallest, which was around 14 stone, 14 point something stone, which I don't know how much that is in pounds. I think that's 100 and something pounds. And I literally looked like damn near ill, okay, in some of the photos and I remember in my mind I thought that I needed to lose like five more stone like it was crazy like you know how people who are I guess anorexic feel in their head that they're bigger that's literally how I felt throughout my whole process throughout all the pictures that I was showing in this video of me being slimmer never once did I genuinely feel like I've arrived like this is me being slim I always thought that I need to lose more weight. So post uni in 2016, I got back up to 18 stone, I believe, from down from like like my lowest in uni, which was 14 stone. So I added on like four more stone. And then I decided to go and do Cambridge. So a Cambridge diet. And what basically I did is that I would eat 800 calories every single day. I even would get to a point where I'll just do liquids. So I'll just do the shakes. I'll literally be having 800 calories worth of shakes every single day. And and that's it. I got down to the lowest, I think it was around 14, in the 14, 15 stones. But when I tell you that time was brutal, although I looked slim on the outside, I was always unhappy because I could not eat. I was always hungry. I would always find that guys were very infatuated with me. They would sexualize me a lot, be very like invest, heavily invested in how I look. They could not get over my body, my looks. And you think, oh, the slimmer you are, the more guys you get, like you're more likely to get like a, a good guy. But that's not the case. You get, you get loads of guys, but the quality of them so it doesn't really matter what size you are, like trying to find a good guy is hard, period. I don't feel feel like your weight necessarily is a huge factor because I'm now in a relationship and I found my boyfriend when I was technically fat. So that's a weird one for me because I would have never thought that that would be the case. I always thought that I needed to be slimmer in order to meet the man of my dreams. <sighs> so basically, lost a lot of weight with Cambridge diet was very miserable. 2018, I had uh, enough. I was like, I am tired of this constant struggle. Like, it's just nowhere to live. I just felt like it's always gonna be something that I struggle with the rest of my life. I'm never, never, never gonna kick this. So I was like, you know what, yeah, I'm done. Like, sayonara, good night. I'm gone. I think I saw Stephanie Bottomore. She was doing the all in. And girl, I did not even research the all in. <laughs> I just knew that she could eat as much as she wanted. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm going to do an all in. And I was like, my body's going to naturally set its like, you know, weight. And from there, it can't get bigger. And then I'll just drop the calories because it comes to its set weight goal. And yeah, so I was like, let me just eat as much as I can. And my body will just like stop adding on weight. And then 
you know, sh slowly but surely it's gonna start come down, my set weight's gonna come down. You know, a bunch of baloney because I didn't really study it in that much context, like, and I think for those type of things you kind of need, like, supervision because I didn't know what I was doing. Clearly I was just reading a YouTube video. So anyways, the point is that basically gave me license to eat what I wanted and basically this is how we were able to now gain over a hundred pounds. I ate damn near everything. I will literally binge and then I think about six months into it, maybe in, I'm a year into it, then I'll start doing a fad diet again. I'll just be really down about my body. It just started the whole cycle again and yeah, I've just haven't seen to be able to actually lose the weight properly because I've just done so much fad dieting. I think my body is just not as responsive as it was before. But I'm just like, let me actually do this for real. Like, let me actually take this journey, not having necessarily like a pressure day as in, oh, I need to do this by a certain date, so I'm gonna fight diet. Let me actually just do this well enough to change my relationship with food. Think about food completely differently. Think of more about my health. Actually actively try and lose this weight healthily, steadily, and not think about losing a ton of weight in a dramatic amount of time. I just wanna re-fall in love with food in a healthy way, not constantly have my thoughts be bombarded by what am I going to eat today? What am I going to eat tomorrow? Food being like such a control and big thing in my life. I want to be free of this struggle. I want to be free of this kind of like burden on me. So yeah, here we are today. I hope you guys enjoyed me babbling along how I essentially got fat, how I got to this point where I am morbidly obese. But I also hope that it encourages you guys to want to start your journey as well, to support me and join me along this journey and see how I lose this 100 pounds, how I get healthier, how is my mental state in all of this. I want to actually be able to go back and see myself and see where I started and where I've come to. It's almost like a diary for me, a video diary for me, for me to see exactly how I did it and what methods I used, what the different things that I tried out because it will be a constant reminder that I can accomplish anything that I put my mind to and that it's always possible to change your life and to bring discipline into your life. So yeah, I'm really excited to do this journey. I know it's going to be super hard but I really want to be transparent and authentic as possible to let you know exactly how I feel, if and when I have setbacks and how I deal with them, how I overcome them, you know, and I want to do find different challenges like I just want us to live our best lives I want us to be healthy I want us to live long but yeah I really hope that you guys will join me on this journey and that you guys will subscribe and like this video and share it with someone who needs it or who wants to start this journey as well and yeah I hope you guys can stick with me and see me at the finish line and yeah thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye